again. Open your Bibles again to Psalm number 3. Psalm number 3. I want you to look at just verse number 4 again. And I would, I would ask for your attention. I have begged the Holy Spirit to help our attention be arrested for the message tonight. I would ask you by way of respect, I would ask you by way of character and by way of hunger to hear the truth of the message tonight. I believe it is so important. The psalmist says in verse number four, I cried unto the Lord with my voice. I'm preaching tonight on this subject, I cried to the Lord. Heavenly Father, I pray again for the presence and the working of the Holy Spirit, the restraining power of the Holy Spirit that restrains sin in the world, may it restrain Satan from distractions of us hearing tonight. And the Holy Spirit that brings conviction with truth of the scripture, may it do its work in my and our hearts tonight. A hunger for your working in the lives of children, teens, and adults as well. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. There's several ways or forms of communicating with God in prayer. We can talk to the Lord. We can call upon the Lord. We can make petition to the Lord. We can, we can communicate with God with our heart's desire. The Bible says of Hannah that she didn't speak out loud, but she, she moved her lips and her heart, of course, was genuine and real and hungry as she was praying for God to give her a son. Last night, I, um, I, I never turned my cell phone off, and every hour uh, on the hour last night, someone called my cell phone. It was a uh, no number ID, and they cursed me every hour. A couple of times, I didn't answer. I just turned it off, and they left messages. And I said to the Lord, I'm so glad I don't live in that world. I'm thankful that you've delivered me from that world and I'm thankful for your hand of protection. There are many ways that we communicate with God. The Bible uses the phrase, lift up our voice to the Lord. In our text passage of scripture, the psalmist cried unto the Lord. Now listen to this statement. The way we approach God with our prayers is an indication of the hunger and the expectation, the hunger of our heart and the expectation we have from God, the way we approach God. Sometimes just talking to God is sufficient. Sometimes just calling upon the Lord is sufficient. Sometimes lifting up our voice, saying something in a prayer that is very specific, that is adequate in our prayers. But as I understand the scripture, there's sometimes that our hunger ought to be so great and our expectation ought to be so great that our prayer is a cry to the Lord. Again, I want to say the way we approach God is an indicator of the condition of our heart. It's interesting to me how many times in the Word of God that a Christian cried to the Lord. We won't look at all of the places, but just to end the Psalms alone, Psalm chapter 30, verse number 2 and verse number 8, he cried to the Lord. Psalm 31, verse number 22, he cried to the Lord. Psalm 66, verse 17, he was so hungry. He had such a desire for an answer that he cried to the Lord. Psalm 88 and verse number 13, Psalm 119, verse 145, and verse 146, you'll find that he cried to the Lord and the Lord answered his cry. 
Psalm 120, verse number 1. Psalm 130, verse number 1. Psalm 138 and verse number 3. Psalm 142, verse number 1 and verse number 2. Those are all times where the psalmist said, I cried to the Lord. I think it's important to understand what makes us cry. Because sometimes a cry is appropriate. Sometimes crying is inappropriate. Selfish crying is not appropriate. When I don't get what I want because I want to consume it on my own lust, that's not an appropriate time to cry, and that's not what he's talking about. I looked at and and, and, uh, uh, tried to find what causes us to cry. As far as what does science say that causes us to cry? Uh, sometimes uh, you cry because of happiness. It's an overwhelming feeling of joy and gladness. Uh, you get good news, maybe a long-awaited answer. Uh, maybe you're waiting on a medical test and the news is good and there's such happiness and joy that, that you just cry. Uh, there is a cry of relief after a long stre- uh, stretch of stress and unhappiness and when the problem goes away sometimes there is such a relief uh, that there are tears. It causes us to cry tears. Sometimes stress causes tears. Uh, we feel like that we can't handle the stress or we can't handle uh, pressure that builds up and we cry. Sometimes exhaustion. Uh, when you feel like you can't do anything else and you have just enough strength to cry. In fact, all of these that I'm mentioning, there are times that someone in the Bible cried as a result of one of these things. Sometimes they cried because of anger. Uh, Sometimes uh, they were angry and uh, they cried. Angry crying can happen happen during an argument when you want to appear strong. Or uh, it can appear, uh, you can cry uh, when uh, we're in danger and crying brings others to our aid. When someone cries, it it causes others to say, what can I do to help them? Uh, Physical pain uh, causes crying, uh, hurt feelings, uh, disappointment, sadness and loss, uh, selfishness. Now, maybe you're a woman and you don't even have to have a reason. You just cried. No, you men that just laughed, your happy Father's Day just ended. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, that's, that's life. That's the way it is. And, uh, but, but the cry that I'm preaching about tonight of the psalmist is the cry of hunger desiring for a dire need to be met. Don't miss it now. Hungering for something from God that only God can give. In Numbers 22, and I'll not go through all the story, but Moses loved his sister Miriam. Uh, Moses was not a perfect man, and none of us are, and it it goes without saying. Uh, But there was a time that Moses made a mistake, and Miriam criticized him publicly. And as a result, because Moses was God's man and Miriam had criticized him privately and publicly, uh, God gave her leprosy. And, uh, and she, w- she would have died of leprosy. As I understand the scripture, Moses went to God and the Bible says at the end of that verse, I think it's verse 12 or 13, and the Bible says Moses cried to the Lord saying, Lord, I'm asking you to heal my sister Miriam. God responded to him and said, I'm going to give her seven miserable days and then I'm going to answer your prayer. But Moses cried on behalf of his sister Miriam asking the Lord to heal her. In 2 Samuel 22, David cried in fear asking the Lord to protect him from Saul. Hannah cried. She wept before God. In fact, the Bible said that she moved her lips. Uh, uh, some said uh, she's drunk and, and uh, she's come into the temple drunk and that wasn't the case. She was so burdened. She was so hungry uh, for that desire to be met. Understanding that only God can answer that quest. It, uh, it brought her to the place of tears. It's interesting. Isaiah cried for his people and he cried for his nation. Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet. 
In fact, there is a book uh, just after Jeremiah written by Jeremiah called The Lamentations of Jeremiah. He wept because of their sin. He wept because of punishment that was coming because of their sin. Ezekiel wept for the people. Uh, The Bible tells us of Zechariah, these four prophets. The Bible speaks specifically about the fact that they not only prayed for their nation, they not only prayed for Israel, Israel, but they came to the place of tears. They were so hungry. Uh, They were hurting so bad for their people. They knew that only God could answer their request, and so they went to God, not just in prayer, but they cried. Now, a person does not cry when they are satisfied. When everything is going our way, when our circumstances are good with us, We don't cry. Cry is only a result of not being satisfied. And here's the purpose of the message tonight. When's the last time we had a spiritual desire that was so strong that we wept before God in tears? Do we ever think only God? I fear sometimes we spend so much time trying to fix a problem that only God can solve. But rather than spending the time in prayer and recognizing that God hears not just our prayers, but God responds to a contrite heart. Sometimes our response when others can't fix our problems are anger. When our when our behavior ought to be prayer before God. When's the last time you cried asking God? Are you listening to me, girls? Asking God for something spiritual. I want you to take your Bible and go to Isaiah 57. Isaiah 57. I love this verse. This is a big verse. It says so much in one verse. Isaiah 57. I want you to notice verse number 15. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity. I can read that, I can say that, but I can't comprehend that because I can't comprehend eternity. But God is so big that he inhabits eternity. He always has been, he always will be. That's how big God is. Whose name is holy. And the Bible says, I dwell in the high and holy place. That's where God dwells. And then it says this, with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. You know, God God responds in a negative manner every time to complaining and anger. But he always, always responds positively to a contrite and a humble spirit. Isn't that interesting? One of my favorite stories, I've probably told this story more than any story I've ever told. Little boy and little girl are playing outside. One says to the other, I'm hungry. It was probably the boy that said that. He said, I'll go to the house and I'll get us a peanut butter sandwich. She said, that's a good idea. And so he went to the house. In a few minutes, he came back and he did not have a peanut butter sandwich. She said, did you get a sandwich? He said, no, mama wouldn't give me a peanut butter sandwich. She said, it would be supper time in a little while and we couldn't have a peanut butter sandwich. She said, let me try. She went up to the house, in just a few minutes, she came back with a peanut butter sandwich in each hand. He said, how did you get those sandwiches? She said, when I asked mama for the sandwiches, I cried. A contrite spirit, tears move not just the hearts, of humans. A contrite spirit moves the heart of God. When's the last time that we so hungered for something from God that we cried? I do not want to be so satisfied with carnal things and temporary things of this world that I never hunger for, that I never pray for, that I never cry with a contrite heart to God 
for spiritual blessings. I do not want to be satisfied with carnal things and temporal things to the place I never cry out to God for spiritual things. Are we so satisfied with our house, our cars, our clothes, our food, our plans, that spiritual needs are very low on the list? I want to make this statement. I said, I do not want to be so satisfied with carnal and temporary things that I never hunger for, I never pray for, I never cry with a contrite heart to God for spiritual things. I certainly do not want to cry for temporal things to the place I never even think about spiritual needs. I've complained this week about gas prices. We probably all have. I, don't, I didn't hear anybody saying amen or praise the Lord at the gas pumps. But I don't want to be such a carnal Christian that I would talk to God about things so temporary as a carnal thing and never hunger for the spiritual things of God. When was the last time that we cried to God for something that is good and right, knowing that he and he only could give it? When's the last time we wept over lost souls? When's the last time we wept over lost souls? Or we shed a tear? of lost souls. I got the bus report today and I saw the number of riders and I saw that there were 19 children that received Christ as Savior. Someone personally dealt with 19 different children and they prayed and said, Jesus, I receive you as my personal Savior. Of all the reports that we get and all the reports that we give, May it never be that we overlook that number of folks that are trusting Christ as Savior. A preacher said to Charles Spurgeon, he said, people don't get saved every time I preach. He said, you don't expect them to, do you? He said, well, no. He said, well, that's why. We hunger to preach a good sermon. We hunger to sing or do well on our song, and we should. But I fear that we allow temporal things to replace what we really ought to be hungry for. When's the last time we shed a tear for the young people of our nation asking God, what can I do? to make a difference. I refuse to let the things of life that I possess satisfy me to the place that I do not allow or I do not stir my heart to be broken for young people in our nation. I watched a video that Sister Young sent me from Africa. And I watched those precious little African children coming to Sunday school and coming to church. I watched his families stood as they had a contest of memorizing scripture. And I watched, I didn't understand the words that they were saying, only understood through Brother Baxter that interpreted them back and forth. They were quoting scripture. I want that to stir my heart more than steel and glass and buildings. We need those. Those are tools. This is a tool. But are we hungry for spiritual things? When's the last time you shed a tear asking God, Oh God, 
Fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit that I may be an effective soul winner. When's the last time we shed a tear saying, Lord, help me to understand the Word of God? It's not one time. It's not two times. It's not ten times. It is scores of times through the Scripture that there was such a hunger and there was such a dependency and the expectation of God that a man or a woman or a child went to God and they didn't just talk to God. They didn't just fellowship with God. On their face before God, tears came down their cheeks as they requested and made their request known to God. Are we so satisfied with what we have in our lives today that we overlook things that are spiritual? I fear that we are like the church has given in the book of Revelation that we talk about the things that we have and we brag about those and God said, you have no idea how miserable, how wretched, how blind, how naked you are. You don't need those things. What you need are the spiritual blessings of God. When's the last time we shed a tear for revival in America? When's the last time we shed a tear for churches to be planted in our nation? Now what causes a person to have a right desire? What would cause us to hunger for and cry for things that are spiritual from the Lord? Now I want you to hear the three things I'm about to say. First of all, knowledge. I need to have understanding. Number two, a mindfulness or having my mind full of the need. And third of all, limiting my intake on carnal things that satisfy me over spiritual things. Let me just use this disgusting illustration. Broccoli isn't bad. I told you it was disgusting. Broccoli isn't bad if you haven't had much to eat in a few days. Well, maybe a week. I once, I once ate a quart of ranch dressing with one little broccoli stick, but anyway. Uh, I, you know... Food that we don't like is typically not food we don't like. It's food we don't prefer because there's other food that we like better than the food that may be better for us. May I say today there are some spiritual things that we ought to get hungry for, that we ought to desire. And if I'm going to be hungry for those things, I have to limit my intake on ball games. on having fun. And, and, and we can justify all of our behavior. The majority of Christians tonight live in a category, they never do anything that's wrong, but they're not hungry for that which God says is best for us. Are you with me tonight? Amen. As Paul recognized and thought of the religion of his people, and yet a lack of faith in Christ, he wept for their condition. He thought about it. He was mindful of it. He was knowledgeable. He was educated. He learned. He saw what they, what they did. He heard what they said. He understood without Christ that they could have no eternal life and they would spend an eternity in the devil's hell. Paul said, I wish myself accursed that my people would be saved. Paul said, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. They being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Now mind you, Paul did give them the gospel. Paul did preach to them, but he understood Stood that there must be a working of the Holy Spirit. So Paul spent time not just in preaching, but spent time in praying for his people to be saved. Amen. 
Yes, we ought to go soul winning. And yes, we ought to give a gospel track. And yes, we ought to work our bus routes. And yes, we ought to teach our Sunday school classes. But should there not be a hunger for the power of the Holy Spirit to help us before we present the gospel, before we teach a lesson? Shouldn't there be a hunger? Oh, but we're so full and satisfied with the carnal things of the world. We're so worried about the problems of the world. We don't spend enough time with the problems so and the power of God but if we spent time with the power of God we would say as David said uh, to that giant uh, you're about to see that there is a God in heaven and all of Israel is going to know of how great our God is I have longed and I long for I have longed in my lifetime for my generation to see that our God is a strong and a powerful and an able God. You've heard me say it. I don't want our children to read about what God used to do. I want them to know he's as great of God as he was the day that he parted the waters of the Red Sea. He's as great a God as the day he gave manna from heaven and water from the rock. He's still that great God. He's the God that made the sun to stand still. He's the God that turned the water into blood in the ditches. He's the God that used men to do a great work. I don't want our children to read about what God used to do. I want them to see what God can do. In the day of political correctness, in the day of compromise in our churches, in a day of those who say you cannot do a great work and their list of excuses of why you can't do a work for God gets longer and longer, there must be a group of adults and a group of Christians that are so hungry for the things of God that we're more hungry to spend time with God in prayer than we are to satisfy ourselves with another game. I wonder if God's people spent half the time this week praying just half the time from playing games and praying. So, some Christians, we don't even think about what we need spiritually. I mean, we've got a house and car and clothes and shoes and job. What more do you need? Friend, those are things that the Gentiles seek after in Matthew chapter 6. We're supposed to be seeking first the kingdom of God in his righteousness. We're supposed to be seeking righteousness in the kingdom of God, not what the Gentiles or the unconverted seek. It's not an easy task to, no, to move forward in hunger, in faith, and desire. But there must be a people that say to their generation, our God's still alive. Amen. Our God's still able. God's answered big prayers this week. God's answered little prayers this week if there are such a thing. Some of you may have seen we rejoice not only to have two full-grown cows given to us at the camp, but a brand new freezer to put the hamburger in. <laughs> and when we went to pick up the meat from the butcher, the butcher said, no charge, I want to give that to the camp. We don't have time to talk about every single need. You understand the burden of our budget and responsibility. It's a big deal. You understand all the ministries of our church. Our budget is right at $13,000 a day. A day. But every day, God answers prayers. Brother Smith texted me and said, I don't want to bother you this week, but please may I call you just for a moment. I answered the phone and he was crying, shouting. I could tell it wasn't a cry disappointed, but it was a cry happy. And he told me of the blessings of the Lord. Now I could stand here tonight and I could tell you of the goodness of God in answering prayers. The purpose of my preaching is to ask you a question. When's the last time you needed something from God so much you cried for it? 
Are you the little fellow that comes back every day and said, Mama said no? Well, go back and cry for it. Go back with a desire. Go to God in prayer and hunger. When's the last time you wanted something from God so much that you wept for it? Let me make these four statements. I'm looking at my watch and I'm going to finish on time. Give you four statements and I close. What are the needs of our day? What are the needs of your family? What are the needs of our church? What are the needs of our nation? Hey, don't, don't go home, sit on your couch in your recliner and forget everybody else. We, we're responsible for others. To whom much is given, much is required. God forbid that we would just go home and forget the world. I ask you tonight, what's the need of our families? What's the need of our nation? What's the needs of our church? Second of all, who can help best of all? God can. God can. Number three, spend time with God in prayer. If we knew God had what we needed, we were convinced of that, we'd spend more time in prayer. Now say last of all, hunger for the things that we need. And don't let the carnal things that the unconverted seek for satisfy us to the place that we have no hunger for the things that are spiritual. Some weeks ago as I was reading the scripture, I read that passage that he cried to the Lord and, and, and it dawned on me. And if you read the Bible and listen to the Bible a lot, one of the things that'll happen is you'll find the same word, the same phrase in another passage of scripture and you'll turn your Bible over and say, yeah, he said the same thing. And then the more you read, the more you hear it, the more you find that. And I started looking for that phrase and I think, he cried a lot. He was hungry a lot. And you know what? He got a lot of answers. Again and again, the Bible said, and he answered. There were sometimes the children of Israel complained. God answered that all right. He gave them poisonous snakes. Now that alone has convinced me not to complain at all because the thing I hate is a poisonous snake and a non-poisonous snake, those two kind I don't like. When's the last time we so hungered? Is there something wrong with us that we never hunger for things that are spiritual? If there is, we ought to make a decision. We can't fix it tonight, but we can make a decision to go home and fix it. Amen. Let's do that right now. Stand with me, if you will. In just a moment, he's going to sing the invitation song. God forbid that carnal things keep me from praying or crying for spiritual things. God forbid that the only time I cry is for something else carnal or temporary. Heavenly Father,